Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to prove a very, very simple theorem, um, which is usually called the squeeze theorem. It's about um, function limits, and obviously this is part of the advanced course of mathematics for teenagers and uh, high school students presented on unizor.com and I do suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because every lecture and this one um, has very detailed um, explanation it's basically like reading your your textbook so it's a live textbook so to speak now um, this theorem is very very important and very very simple so it will be a very short lecture anyway um, here is what it is first of all about the name it's called squeeze theorem and there are some other names um, the sandwich theorem the um, pink pinching I think pinching yeah pinching theorem um, and also much more colorful name um, which I used to um, to know when I learned this theorem the first time it's the theorem about two policemen and a drunk man so here is what it is um, consider you have certain function and um, this function is always between two other functions so there is one function which is above it and one function which is below it so there is always this type of inequality now let's consider that the smaller and the bigger function are all coming to a point at certain x equals to r and the point is let's say l limit so whenever you are coming along this function 2x equals r or this function um, to x equals r we will actually have exactly the same limit on both functions this one and this one both are going to limit l so the theorem states that in this case this one which is in between also goes so that's actually where the name two policemen and a drunk um, it comes from because if they go to let's say some kind of police precinct he has no other choice because they are on both sides of him or a sandwich theorem or a squeeze theorem so whatever you want to call it more traditional is squeeze theorem uh, at least in uh, in American schools all right so um, now there are certain variations of this theorem now this is the variation which I'm going to prove I'm not going to prove variation when instead of x equals to r there is some kind of an infinity which means if these two upper and lower bound functions are going at infinity going to some limit let's say this is level l so this function goes to level l and this function goes to level l as x goes to infinity then again g of x also will go to the same limit uh, l that's that's one of the um, uh, variation of this when the argument goes to infinity obviously plus infinity or minus infinity doesn't matter now another variation is when l is infinite which means if these two functions are infinitely decreasing let's say then this one which is in between also will infinitely decrease or infinitely increasing so that's when the l actually is non rigorously speaking equals in, 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 in infinity all right so i'm going to prove it in a very simple case which is when l and r are normal real numbers uh in case of infinity it's just a very very simple variation which i'm not going to to spend your time I mean it would be probably a very nice exercise if you can just prove it for yourself but uh, it, it's really very very simple uh, change so let's just do it in this particular case 
when I have some kind of a number here so x goes to let me put it this way x goes to r and both of them and therefore the one in between goes to r it goes to l and this is l all right so how can i prove it well let's use the epsilon delta definition of the limit now what does it mean that function f at x goes to L if x uh, tends to R. It means the following. For any epsilon, positive epsilon, however small, there should be some kind of a delta neighborhood of the point R such that as long as my x is within delta neighborhood of R immediately follows from this that f at x would be within epsilon neighborhood of L. So for any however small neighborhood of L I can always find such neighborhood of R so as long as argument is close to R, closer than delta then my function will be closer to L. That's what basically definition of the um, limit is. Okay, so I know that. I also know exactly the same thing about H, right? So let's call this epsilon one, that's for F. And now I can say exactly the same, that there is a depth uh, uh, delta two, such that if X is in the delta 2 neighborhood of R, then the function H also would be within epsilon uh, neighborhood of L. So, for any epsilon, no matter how small it is, I can always find delta 1 and delta 2 such that this is, from this follows this, and from this follows this. Now, now very simple thing let's have delta equals to minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. What happens? Well, if delta is the minimum, then both are true. So we found such a delta when both of, the, uh, both of these are true. Now, Let's just think about graphically. This is some number, and this is some number, and L is some number. Let's consider this is my number. So this is my L. What does it mean that f at x minus L less than epsilon? Well, if this is my L minus epsilon and this is L plus epsilon so it means that f at x is somewhere here and h at x is also somewhere here let's say here and we always know that this is it this is true so in between them g must be somewhere in between right so that's kind of a graphical explanation um, a little bit maybe less graphical would be the following purely algebraic kind of a kind of a logic so from this we know that f at x less than l plus epsilon and greater than l minus epsilon right from this we know that h of x less than And therefore, g at x is less than h at x, less than L plus epsilon, right? But g of x is greater than f at x, and f at x is greater than L minus epsilon, uh, epsilon. So we got again the same thing. From L minus to L plus epsilon would be our g of x. 
So for this epsilon, whatever the epsilon we can choose, however small, we can always find some delta that this is true. We have found this delta, that g of x is satisfying this uh, uh, inequality, which is absolutely equivalent to the fact that g of x minus l less than epsilon, which means g of x is within epsilon neighborhood of l. So l is the limit, by definition of the limits. So this is a very, very simple proof. I mean, it's just one-liner practically. I was talking a lot and I was drawing some graphs, but it's really one-liner proof. Um, with infinity, either r is infinity, which means when, when x is infinitely growing or infinitely decreasing, or when l is infinitely growing or infinitely uh, decre uh, decreasing. Um, so l is infinity, so to speak. It's really absolutely trivial and repetition of this um, I, I think it would be a great uh, exercise just for you and um, you can send it to me as a proof and I will just publish it on my website if you want to with proper attribution of course so anyway that was my very short um, uh, proof of a very very important theorem because lots of very very useful things in um, analysis of the functions in limits function limits can be proven using this technique. So if we, if we find some kind of a lower bound for a function and higher bound, and we can prove that both of them are going to the same limit, then whatever is in between will also go to this limit. That's how we can prove um, some statements about the limit of the g of x. All right, but that would be in, in the next lecture. I will definitely use it. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and uh, good luck.